Hello everybody and welcome to a video that I wanted to push out quickly because there was such a request for it on our recent Arkham Horror the Card Game versus Lord of the Rings the Card Game. Today we're going to be talking about Arkham Horror comparing it to Marvel Champions the Card Game. So this is not really a buy guide and it's, it's mostly just like if you have the money for one or if you were looking at both and you want to know which ones can interest you, this guide is here to help you determine which one is best for you, or if you have the money for both, why not buy both, right? Because uh, really, that these, these two games are very different um, in, like, what you get out of them. It's, it's one of those things where I've seen a lot of people uh, say that Marvel Champions isn't for them because they're such big Arkham Horror the Card Game fans. However, I have to say Marvel Champions scratches such a particular itch and I think it's a very successful card game. And I think especially if you are just, uh, if you're not crazy into card games, but you like Marvel, um, and you don't want to get like into a huge game commitment, Marvel Champions is really nice for that. So before I get into talking about the differences between them, the comparison from the two, uh, let's just dive in and look at a summary for each of these games. Arkham Horror the Card Game, it's a big part of our channel. We release a video every day of the week, uh, and I've been playing it since it's come out. So in Arkham Horror the Card Game, you take on the role of an investigator with unique deck building rules. You build a deck of 30 cards, usually, and upgrade it over an 8 scenario campaign, usually. The campaign system tells a unique story with decisions that provide rewards and consequences, and it has a map-based play area which allows for variation and additional decisions for the players. This is probably the thing that Arkham has the most over Lord of the Rings and Marvel Champions. It's because it has a map-based system, so it provides an entirely new level of depth that these games don't have. Marvel Champions and Lord of the Rings both make it up in other ways. They have their own little quirks that make them particularly unique. However, uh, Arkham Horror does have that map, which makes it... A, a meteor game. So if you're looking for a meteor game right off the bat, Arkham Horror the Card Game is meteor and just in terms of what you can do on your turn, which is a big part of the game because that's where you play. The last part from Arkham here is a new release format makes this the best time to enter the game. This is particularly relevant here because both Lord of the Rings and Arkham Horror the Card Game had an old release model that was really bad for the consumers. Then Marvel Champions came out and it had an actually good release model. Now Arkham Horror the Card Game and Lord of the Rings are both working to match the release model that Marvel Champions had. They each have, uh, Arkham Horror now has its own like unique, even more unique kind of style of release model. But now with Arkham Horror the Card Game you can just buy the core set and get everything you need because that's how it was for Marvel Champions. Who would have thought that spending a bit more money up front and only buying one copy was better than spend, essentially spending more for two copies. Who would have thought? Now, as for Marvel Champions. So in Marvel Champions, you take on the role of a Marvel superhero and battle notable villains. Uh, you get to build a deck around a hero of your choice using a fixed set of cards unique to that superhero. This right here is particularly relevant because one of the biggest um, complaints that I have found from users in our Discord channel who are very pro Marvel Champions is that the deck building is very limited in Marvel Champions. And this is, I, I, can't, I can't disagree because deck building is not nearly as fun in Marvel Champions as it is in either Lord of the Rings or Arkham Horror. However, there are some pros to the Marvel Champion deck building that I kind of prefer. Number one, it's easy. So if you're a new player and you don't really like deck building, Marvel Champions is great for you because it comes with a pre-constructed deck when you buy a hero pack. So a hero pack, one second, I actually have one in paper. Let me grab it. So a hero pack is exactly like this. This is the War Machine Hero Pack, and it comes with a pre-constructed deck for War Machine that includes his set of unique cards that are fixed, 
And it also comes with <clears throat> some other cards for other aspects. An aspect is part of deck building. It doesn't really matter too much for the recommendation for it. It's just you choose your hero and then an aspect and you build with that aspect and then the set hero cards. <clears throat> the other thing that's a big plus in my mind about the hero cards is that it makes your hero actually feel unique. In Arkham Horror the card game, especially now with its growing card pool, a lot of the times your investigators kind of just... There is very little difference between the investigators because the cards, the player cards are so strong that they kind of just, in the end, can just blur into the same type of investigator. They have different deck building restrictions, but overall, a Mandy that runs, a, a, like if, if there's someone runs the same ally, right? Like you need to try. Ultimately, you need to try and bring in restrictions if you don't want to build super optimally because a lot of the time, the, the investigators don't feel different from one another enough if you're looking for that kind of thing. So the deck building is deeper in Arkham Horror the card game than in Marvel's, but in Marvel Champions, uh, the heroes feel more unique to themselves, which is could be a big pro to you. Uh, another thing is that this game is extremely modular, allowing you to customize the difficulty that works best for you. Marvel Champions is the easiest card game of the three uh, co-op living card games from Fantasy Flight Games. It's a lot easier than Arkham, and it's a lot, a lot easier than Lord of the Rings. It can be difficult when you're just starting out and you're learning the game, but Marvel Champions is by far the easiest game of the three. Because of this, it has a lot of modularity that you can do to um, change what you get from the game. So this includes, you can include different um, you can include an expert set of cards that comes in the core set. There are a bunch of uh, encounter sets that you can change from villain to villain, as well as an expert mode and a standard mode, and then like a heroic mode, which is an um, which is a variant that you can find online that makes the game even harder. So the modularity allows you to adjust to best fit you, which is why Marvel Champions, I think, is the best game for newer players to the genre. If you're like, you're only going to get one, Marvel Champions is... Like, if you're only buying the core box, there's a lot more game that you're going to get in the Marvel Champions core box than you're going to get in the Arkham Horror core, core box, for an example. Um, this game has a campaign mode, which is included in certain box sets, but the campaign mode isn't like an Arkham campaign. It's not telling a crazy story. There are some things that matter and carry over. There's like your actions have consequences. You can earn rewards. However, from the two campaign modes I've played, it's not nearly compared to Arkham. So if you're looking for like a story-based, long-form gameplay, Arkham Horror is great for you. However... Marvel Champions as a whole is more of an arcade gameplay style. So an example of this is that a scenario in Arkham when I play two-handed solo, when I play just solo, it takes about maybe 35 to an hour, right? 35 to 60 minutes depending on the scenario. Marvel Champions on the other, high, other hand can take roughly me usually 10 to 25 minutes for a game. So it has much more of a feeling where you walk up to the arcade machine, you put some coins in, you do a quick little arcade brawl, and then it's over. So the games are a lot shorter. You can get a lot more game out of an hour uh, in terms of like different games uh, than uh, Arkham Horror the Card Game. Uh, and if you're looking for a quick thing that you can just play in a half hour, Marvel Champions is going to be your bet here. Uh, that is a, it is a pro and also a con, because the gameplay in Marvel Champions ultimately ends up feeling very similar. However, I will admit, with some of the new or newer scenarios I've played, the design space they're beginning to explore with their scenarios is a lot cooler, which is fun. And then finally, the release format allows players to easily pick and choose which packs they want to buy. This is less of a problem with Arkham. However, with Arkham, you're going to find pretty early on that 
you are kind of limited by both the player cards and the scenarios that you have. In Marvel Champions, it's not as much of a thing because you can, you can buy the core set and then you can be like, oh my god, I love the hell out of War Machine. I want to buy War Machine. And then you have a new hero with new cards that you can just play in your core set. So this guy, like, he's like $16 Canadian, roughly. Um, and he gets you a whole new thing to play. Like a whole new hero to play with. With Arkham War the Card Game, you need to buy a pack, which comes with, with five investigators, but it is more money. So, like, this is one that's easier to pick up over time than it is, um, like, you can just buy what you want. You can be more selective. When in Arkham, it's a little bit harder. And actually, you'll see this a lot in the community, too, where players will recommend that you need to grab this and this and this and this and this. And there's a lot more long-term costs that, like... Arkham Horror will have for you. So if you're looking for like a more arcadey, simple type of game, Marvel Champions is probably for you. So, I think both games are fantastic. I love the hell out of Arkham Horror the card game. It's probably one of my favorite games I've ever played. It's at least easily in the top five, right? I love the hell out of Arkham Horror the card game. Marvel Champions, while not in my top five, is a game I really enjoy playing. So, like, this is something that people were saying on the previous one with the Lord of the Rings and Marvel Champions. We do have a big, a little bit of a bias to Arkham War, the card game, but that's also because, like, just naturally we like it more. We do. However, that doesn't mean that Lord of the Rings is a bad game, and Marvel Champions is also not a bad game. They're both very good. They just, if you're only buying one, it really depends on what type of game you're looking for more. So, with Arkham War, the card game... If you, the big pro for Arkham Horror the Card Game is it's incredible story-based gameplay style. So if you buy a campaign, like if you buy a core box and then you buy the Dunwich Legacy campaign box for Arkham Horror the Card Game, you're going to get a lot of game out of that. You also can replay your scenarios in Arkham Horror the Card Game, even though the surprises aren't really there. The variance on the card that you draw, the cards that you draw during the Mythos phase, how you draw from your deck, you, the investigator you build, uh, will provide enough replayability that replaying campaigns is fun if you like the game. So I do think that I think both games are ultimately very replayable, but the long story-based form of Arkham is really nice. That's also a downside, though, for Arkham is that like you have to commit to eight games when you start playing Mar uh, Arkham. But in Marvel Champions, you can be like, I think I want to fight Ultron today with Spider-Man. So that's what I'm going to do. And it's just a lot easier to just get into a game of Marvel Champions. The downside is, is that the general um, <clears throat> action flow, like your turns in Marvel Champions, while kind of a fun little puzzle and dance all of their own, are a lot less deep than Arkham Horror the Card Game. And that is ultimately by design. Arkham Horror the Card Game is a very complex game. I believe of the three games, Arkham, Lord of the Rings, and Marvel, Arkham is the most complex of the games, and it has a rule system that sometimes is particularly obtuse. Uh, Marvel Champions is the least complicated of the games, and it's best for new players in the genre. Not that Arkham Horror is bad for new players, it's starting scenario to teach you the game is really nice but there's a much bigger learning curve for Arkham Horror than there is for Marvel Champions. Uh, Arkham Horror also has a big pro where its deck building is a lot deeper than Marvel Champions. So this is something that I told uh, I said earlier that I've seen probably the biggest um, point of contention uh, from the viewers in my Discord channel for this one is that uh, Marvel Champions its deck building is a lot less spicy. So if you're a deck builder, Marvel Champions is probably not for you. If you're a deck builder, you're probably looking for something like Lord of the Rings or Arkham Horror the Card Game. Arkham Horror the Card Game, can you can do a lot of really cool stuff with your deck building, and the experience system inherently makes it a bit more enjoyable, even though it's a little bit more limiting. It inherently does, because of our minds, we, we see number go up and we think this is fun, right? Even though it actually, like, really is not, like, it's kind of just a thing. It's just, like, it's a balancing mechanic. But in our minds, we like earning experience. And that's a fun part of the Arkham Horror card game experience as well. No, no pun intended. 
Marvel Champions, much more limited with the deck building, but I do think you get a more unique style of gameplay from Marvel Champions. This, I've not played every hero, so I can't speak for all of them, but for example, you have Quicksilver, um, Spider-Man, Iron Man, they all play very different from each other, which is fun, and I think a huge success to the game. And then you even add like Gamora and Star-Lord. I think Marvel Champions' biggest success is the difference between the heroes and uh, the design that comes with them. Another big thing, uh, I'm, I might be repeating some stuff here, but another thing that I, I really like about Marvel Champions is, is that the gameplay is so quick. So when I'm just craving a quick little game, I can play Marvel Champions for 15 minutes and be like, I've done it. Um, the downside of Marvel Champions is that the gameplay loop is very similar uh, in Arkham Horror. This goes back to what I was saying about the map system. The map system is probably the biggest thing that Arkham Horror the card game has going for it. It's the thing that really separates it from all these other games and all other co-op uh, co games I've played. Is this modular map system that changes from scenario to scenario, which also provides some variance and some replayability. It's huge. It's it's gigantic. It cannot be stated enough how big and how important the map system is for Arkham Horror the card game. So Marvel Champions is shallower in that regard, but it's still fun and it's still very popcorn-y. A big thing as well that Marvel Champions has over Arkham Horror the card game is the solo gameplay. Arkham Horror the card game is fun solo. I play a lot of two-handed solo. I don't play true solo Arkham Horror the card game. However, I do play a lot of um, two-handed, and it's fun. However, it's a lot to set up on your table if you're going to be playing solo by yourself. Marvel Champions, on the other hand, I play true solo, and I have an absolute blast doing it, and it is a lot easier to set up and take down than it is for Arkham Horror the card game. So really, when it comes to this point, you ultimately have to ask the question, what are you looking for? Are you looking for an easier to play game that you can get more game in a block of time that's easier to set up and tear down and also has an easier way to purchase into it? Or are you looking for a more complex game that is now easier to buy into than it was in the future, but it kind of begs for you to have as much of the game as possible? that has more story-based formats, so it does offer a little bit more of a hook when you're playing, um, versus something that's just a little coin in the machine and you get what you want. As I said, for my personal recommendation, I think uh, if I had to just like point to one right now, I would say Arkham Horror the card game. If I had to point to one, if the one I prefer. However, I like them both for different reasons. I think they're both really fun games. And I've actually been really enjoying the heck out of Marvel Champions the more that I've played it. Mostly because the solo mode is so fun and so quick that I can get a game in really easily. And the way that you can test, you, the way that the heroes have their own unique thing is really nice. Like, when I played like Gamora for the first time, she plays completely different than everyone else I've seen before while keeping like that similar flow. And she's just really fun, right? So like, while I have a lot of investigators that I like in Arkham Horror the card game, there are some that just like kind of just merge together. Like there's an entire class in Arkham Horror the card game that kind of just feels the same no matter how you're playing it. And I haven't really found that feeling in Marvel Champions yet. Albeit, once again, I have not played every hero in Marvel Champions. I've played a lot more Arkham Horror the card game. But I'm just trying to, like, really showcase what I view as the pros and cons for each of these games. I think they're both really good. And uh, I think both games are winners. And if you like the idea of a more complex story-based game with better deck building, Arkham Horror is for you. If you want a nice, easy popcorn game that doesn't require as much deck building that you can just play quickly, Marvel Champions is for you. If you like Marvel, also probably Marvel Champions is for you too. That's <laughs> that's kind of easy there. Um, it's cool. I think that's it. I don't really have much else to say off the top of my head for this. I think just both games are sweet, and I hope this helped you figure out the best way to spend your money. Because that's ultimately what this goal of this series is about. It is not to 
say buy this, don't buy that. It's to give kind of just a uniform blanket description for these games that allow you to make the best informed decision with your money. Would you like to see me do this with Lord of the Rings and Marvel Champions? Because I can, I can make another video on that. If you want to see me compare these to other games as well, let me know in the comments. And if I've played them and I have enough experience, I can talk about them. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Huge shout out to our patrons for supporting the channel. You guys, you all rock, all of you. Uh, and thank you so much to all of them down there. If you would like to become a patron, you can find it down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. And as always, oh, GG's.